A lot of times when we're designing pages, we really want to understand how people are interacting with different components on the page. Of course, you can do this with heat mapping software like Hotjar or Microsoft Clarity, but sometimes it's nice to just be able to track button clicks or something like that for a particular element via Google Analytics. So today I'm going to show you how to create a Google Analytics event via Google Tag Manager. And this is a WooCommerce site that's built on, built on Elementor, which is, of course, a WordPress page builder. So without further ado, let's get started. So here we have a web store and we have this price match button and when people interact with this price match they get a form that they can fill their name and email into but until they do so um, we don't really understand what's happening with this price match in other words no one has any idea how many people start the price match button process but don't actually finish it today we're going to close that loop and figure that out. So the first thing that you want to do when you're planning a tagging implementation is figure out what is the element that you're going to grab and isolate from the rest of the page so that you can track it in Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager. So how do we, step one, identify the element? So we want to figure out what is the individual code, for example, that a person is interacting with. So we call these CSS selectors. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go right click on that and then click inspect. And then we can see here on the right that this button has a class and it's this element or button link element or button size medium. So uh, and then it, you know, when you highlight over here, it highlights over in the center of the screen as well. So this class doesn't sound unique to me. And rem if you know CSS, you'll want to remember that a class can be applied across many elements of a site, um, whereas an ID is usually more individual to one specific thing. So let's look at another button and see what does it have the same class or is maybe that class individual because maybe we can get away with the class. But here we go, element or button text, which I, if you were to right click on this button text and, and you see again, it's element or button text. So that wouldn't be good, right? Because we would be clicking on or, or isolating anytime someone clicks on a button text and so we wouldn't understand price match we would understand you know how many times did people click on buttons on the site false data not what we want so let's go back and click on sort of a different part of that button and see okay element or button link button element or size medium again that's the same as that price match element. So that's not what we want. Not good. Um, so let's go ahead and figure out how do we add an ID only to this specific button so that we can then grab it in Google Tag Manager and then implement an event in Google Analytics. So the first thing you want to do is, you know, if you're logged into WordPress, click edit with Elementor on any of your product pages. This is a button that's across all of our, our product pages. And then because we're working with WooCommerce as opposed to an individual page that's unique to all other pages, we're going to click this theme button or button builder element. Otherwise, you would just be able to click, you know, edit page right here. But again, we're working on a theme and we're working on something with product pages. So we want to focus on that theme builder. So here we go. The single product is what we want to work with. Here's that price match button. Good news. And we click edit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a specific ID to this price match button. So here, let's isolate the button. And then here, as soon as you click on an, any element in, um, in your Elementor, then you will be able to, to isolate and add 
CSS IDs and classes. You saw that there when I clicked that. So let's go back to this price, um, price match button. So here we go, button ID. So I am going, so this notice here, it says add your custom ID without the pound key. So this is important. A lot of times if you're referencing a class in CSS, you have a dot. If you're referencing a class in CSS, you or an ID, you're, you have that pound sign. So this is saying don't add that here because you will uh, mess up the key. So I am going to say price match button. This is a unique ID that I'm adding to every price match button so that when anyone clicks it, I it will fire specifically this one price match button. So let's go back to the store. I updated that page, by the way, uh, by clicking update. And then let's click into a new product just to make sure, you know, that this price match ID applied across the board. So now I'm gonna right click again on this button. I'm gonna ins inspect the button. And here we see ID equals price match button. Look at that. Um, so that is awesome. Now we have something to work with in Google Tag Manager. So the next thing you wanna do is open up your Google Tag Manager account and go to your workspace and then say add new tag on so tags new tag or um actually sorry um once you're in the home page here add new tag so then you want all of your tags to be descriptive so i'm going to call this here a google analytics event and then i'm going to call it um clicked oops clicked product page price match button. So this is super clear, right? Um, and the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to set up the trigger. So we need a brand new trigger that's gonna isolate these product pages. So you click, you know, that button, that plus button, and then here we have we're again we're naming this trigger very clearly so clicked price match button and sometimes i say like product page or something like that in the beginning or the end but um on product page i'm just gonna go with that so here we know this super clear that when someone clicks something so now we are clicked that center part to begin the setup and then we're going to make sure that our trigger type is click. So now, if you don't see this on the right hand side of your configuration, you actually need to go back into your Google Tag Manager and add that interaction. So just in case you haven't done that, I'm gonna help you do that now. So you're gonna go back to the home page of your tag manager, or you can just open up a new tab as I've done, and you want to click on this triggers, and, um, or sorry, variables, and then you're gonna click, click configure, and you're gonna check the variables that you think you're going to want to enable in Google Tag Manager. So here I just went ahead and clicked all of these click variables, and then um, once that's done, you will just notice that your list has gotten longer and those built-in variables will be set up for you. So now that you have those built-in click variables set up and ready to go, the next thing we wanna do is go back to our trigger and we are gonna configure it. So you're gonna go to click on that center part, then do click all elements, and then you're going to say some clicks. And then instead of the class, you want to click this click ID. So what you're saying is that the ID contains, or you actually, let's say equals, just to be precise, this, the click ID equals the same ID that we set up in Elementor. So I'm just, for the sake of reducing human error, pasting exactly that ID that I created. So 
then you you can also add more things. So um, if you wanted, you could say that, um, you know, you, you could say the page URL contains, and then you could say, okay, I know that my store, all the products are on a specific page with store in the URL. There's no other case where I have a product that doesn't you know, belong in that hierarchy. So in this case, I'm just gonna also add that it contains store. Page URL contains store, click ID there. So, um, and it says all of these conditions are true, right? It's not one or the other, it's both. So we have those, we're gonna save, and then we're gonna see all right, that trigger is set up. Now, the next part is we're gonna create the tag configuration that joins this to Google Analytics. So we're, in this case, using Google Universal Analytics, and we are gonna track an event, right? So then we want to classify the different components of this. So the first thing is I am going to call this a button click as the category of event that I'm tracking. And then I'm gonna say product page price match. So categories, if we are thinking about this, are the categories are wider and then the actions tend to be more precise of what is it that this person took within that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build, I'm gonna click this and then I'm really interested in what's the page URL that this person was on when they clicked the price match, right? Because then I can see, all right, when people are looking at high ticket items, for example, they're price matching it. Or we know, for example, that there's this one irrigation thing that called an octobubbler that we are the lowest on the market. People buy them in bulk. And so people want to price match that. So that is a really good way to also see, in addition to the button click and the interactions with the product page price match, where did this happen? The last thing is you want to set you select your Google Analytics setting variable. So if this is something that you haven't set up yet, um, I can show you how I'll add a link to a video below and um, then that will be set up. Basically what you're doing in this case is you're just connecting your Google Analytics setup to this Google Analytics event. So then in some cases, you know, you might want to um, change or um, adjust how this happens, um, like in terms of the firing options once per page, once per event, or unlimited. So once per page means that someone can only click it once every time they click it. Unlimited could be, you know, all the time. So I'm actually going to click once per page because that is um, basically saying that if someone were to rage click a bunch of times and nothing would happen, um, then it would register multiple clicks. I don't want to see that. I more want to see how many customers are doing this. So I'm going to do once per page and then we are going to hit save. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you exactly how this um, looks in Google Analytics. But now we want to preview exactly what is, is this working for us? So you hit that preview button, a new tab will open up. If your URL is not already in there, you want to add it. Be sure to add your HTTPS at the beginning and then you're going to click connect. This is going to open up a new window of your website. You can interact with it however you want. And like, you know, just like a regular page, I'm going to go to a different product again, just to make it fun. And I am going to 
check that this is all connected. So we can see I have a Google Ads conversion linker. It's firing. I've loaded three pages. It's all working. Uh, this is the GTM ID that I'm using and I have embedded in this website. And the remarketing tag for Google Ads is also firing. So all is looking good. Now let's click this button and see if something else fired. So we can see that it didn't. Um, the event is here, but when we clicked it, nothing, oh, there it went. Okay, sorry. So there, yeah, for some reason it just uh, took a minute. Um, so it did fire, thank goodness. And if you click into this, you can see exactly what it is that happened. So click ID equals price match button. That's what we set up. The page URL contains store. Awesome. And then you can do this show more as to also see. So label, page URL, everything's looking great. So I would, because the, the test worked, I would go to one more just to double check and I would make sure that it worked. Um, in this case, I'm not going to bore you with that. And we are going to just submit this in Google Tag Manager. Whenever you submit something new, it's a best practice to make sure that you name it properly. So Google um, adding price match button click monitoring, something like that. You can add a description as well. And then we're going to publish this. And then you can see all of your tags and we can see that the trigger and, and you know, these are the things that are published on the website. And now for the final piece of the equation, let's make sure this is being tracked specifically in Google Analytics. So you're going to want to go to your Google Analytics page, and then you're going to go to real time. You're going to go to overview, and then you are going to be able to see what is happening here. So I'm just going to go in the last five minutes. You can see I've been testing it a little bit. It's been working just fine, um, but we'll go back to the store and we're going to click one here and we can see if I go here, I want to price match this calibration holder. I click that little button and boom, there is the store, you know, calibration holder, boom, event in the last five minutes, you are good to go. So as long as your data is matching, um, you're great. So, if you have any questions, let me know, and I hope that's helpful.